Welcome to the video on setting up your GitLab repo. One person in your group should go through this process. However, it benefits everyone to watch what's happening in this video. So everyone should watch this, but only pick one person in your group to go through this process. Everyone else in your group will have to go through a slightly different process, which we'll go through in a later video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to set up your Git repo on gitlab.com, how to initialize it properly, we're going to put the Unity project into the Git repo for all of your groupmates to access. And we're also going to give access to them and set up your Git ignore file. So there's a lot we're gonna do that's just initial setup of our Unity project inside of a repo. The first thing we wanna do is let's close out of our Unity project. Now this project has my level in it that I've been working on and we are eventually going to take this one project and we're going to share it with everyone in our group. The ultimate goal here is that everyone is going to be working out of a single Unity project, and it's going to contain everyone's levels inside of it. So first thing we need to do is let's close out of this. Now, for convenience, I have my Unity project right here on my desktop, and I also have my Git ignore file ready to go. Your Git ignore file can be found on Brightspace, so you can go download it from there. Additionally, you could also find your Git ignore file from other people in your group may have one, or you can contact your instructor for a copy of this. All right, to initialize my Git repo, the first thing I need to do is I need to go to gitlab.com. Gitlab.com looks like this. And I want to go to login here in the upper right. If it's my first time here, I'm gonna to have to create a username and password for this. And when you do, please use your snhu.edu email address to do so. I already have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. When you sign in for the first time, you may not be presented with a screen that looks like this. I'm on a lot of projects, so I have a lot of projects that are listed here on the screen. For you, you may not look, <laughs> it may not look like something like this. And instead, it actually might forward you right to the new project setup screen, um, which is the next thing we're gonna go to. So you might need to go to this, hit this new project button. And your goal here is you're gonna create a new blank project. All right, um, all right so I'm gonna hit blank project here. And now I'm gonna set up my group project for the course. And this is the one project that everyone in my group is gonna be working on. So I'm gonna call it GAM120, the name of the course, hyphen, and then my group name. So I'm just gonna call this group name as an example. You would call it whatever your, the name of your group is. I'm gonna leave it as private and I'm gonna initialize it with a readme. Remember that only one person in your group needs to do this. So if you haven't decided who that person is, make sure that you connect with the rest of your group and do so, so that you're not like not creating multiple projects with the same name. Only one person needs to go through this process. All right, finally hit create project. Now that you have the repo set up, it's empty. The only thing in it is this one readme file right here. And so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna give access to this repo to everyone else on our team. To do that, we're gonna go over here to project information, go to members, and then I'm gonna punch in the email addresses of everyone else who's on my project. When I do that, I wanna make sure that this role that I've selected is set to developer. I wanna give everyone developer access. If I don't do that, then they won't be able to push their files to the repo. Once I've done that, I'll hit invite and I should see them listed down here. Once I've added everyone else to the group or to the repo, let's go on to the next step, which is taking my Unity project and adding it to this repo. To do that, the next thing I need to do is clone this repo onto my computer. To clone, I'm gonna go back here to the repo, the repository tab. I'm gonna hit clone, and I'm gonna hit this copy button right here next to copy URL. I'm gonna use git fork to do the next portion here. You can also use source tree, or there's another one called tower. You could even use the git command line tools if you want to. I prefer using fork. I think it's a really nice tool to do all these git operations that we're gonna do. If you don't have it installed and would like to install it, you can find it at git-fork.com. It does say that it's $50, but actually it has a free evaluation and the evaluation lasts forever. So you don't actually need to pay for it. This is more of like a suggested donation. If you do enjoy using this program and you do end up using it long-term and you have the extra money to support the developers of it, then I'd highly recommend you do, but it's definitely not necessary. All right, so download Fork if you don't have it. And then let's go back to Fork and see what, this, what the next steps are. 
So I'm going to go to File, Clone, and I'm going to paste the repo address that I had copied previously from gitlab.com. And I'm going to put it right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where on my computer I want it to store my repo. For convenience, I'm going to put it right on my desktop. You might put this under your documents folder. You might put it under an SNHU folder that you have somewhere on your computer. Wherever you keep all of your coursework for, um, for, your, for your courses on your computer is appropriate. Finally, I'm going to leave it named as GM120 group name, and I'm going to hit clone. Excellent. What this does is if I go back to my desktop, I now have a new folder that looks like this GM120 group name. This is my copy of my group's repo, except it's the local version that I have on my computer. It only has the readme in it so far, that one readme file that it was initialized with. So our next step is I want to put my Unity project inside of this. So here's my Unity project. And I'm just going to copy this by just clicking and dragging. I'm going to move it into my Game 120 folder. Inside this, now this is also a good opportunity for me to actually rename this to something else. So I can call this my, you know, maybe I'll call it my group project or rename it to my group name. Now is the time to do this. If you want to rename your, uh, your Unity project, now's the time to do it. Inside my Unity project, I have my assets folder, my library, logs, OBJ, packages, and a whole bunch of other ones. Most of these files don't actually have to go to my repo. And so to filter out the ones that don't need to go to my repo, that's where this git ignore file comes in. If I go back here to git fork, I'll notice that there says that I have 14,807 files that I've changed on my computer that are ready to go up to the repo. My Unity project doesn't actually contain 14,800 files. So what I want to do is filter the, the ones that I don't want to send up there. Primarily, it's this library directory. The library directory is full of a bunch of temporary files that Unity generates while you're working. So those don't need to go up to Git. In fact, pushing those up to Git will probably just cause headaches for your group over the rest of the semester. So we really want to be sure that we filter these out right now. This is a really important step. And if you notice that your Git ignore is not working properly or that these library files are ending up in your repo, it's most likely worthwhile to delete them all and recreate and go through this video again and make sure you're following all the steps here precisely. All right, I'm going to take this Git ignore and I'm going to put it right here inside my Unity project folder, right? It's not here in my base in the base folder for my repo. It's inside my Unity project. It's right here next to my assets folder, next to my library folder, so on and so forth. If we open up this git ignore file, we can see what it's actually doing. It actually just lists out a bunch of files or folders that should be ignored by git. Here it's saying ignore the library folder, ignore the temp folder, ignore that obj folder. Those things don't need to go to the repo. Now if I go back to fork, and I look at my local changes, there's only 172 files. Great. That's approximately the size of your, um, your uni project. Yours may be more or less depending on how many assets you've imported into it, but somewhere in this range of a couple hundred is most likely where it is. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to stage all these files. So I'm going to click on my group project folder here inside this window, right? I've gone to local changes. I've gone to local changes and I'm going to select this group project folder. Right, which lists out all the files that I've changed on my computer. And I'm going to hit stage. When I stage files, it's telling the Git system, it's telling Git fork which files I want to prepare to be sent up to the server, sent into my repo, sent to GitLab, sent to the rest of my group mates. So I'm going to stage all the files. And then down here, I'm going to leave a comment on what it is that I'm doing. So these files are the initial Unity project. my initial unit project. I'm going to go ahead and hit commit my 172 files. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit push. And then I can hit push again. I can see the progress up here at the top. And now if I go back to all commits, I can see there was the initial commit when the repo was first created. And now there's this new commit, the one I just made with the initial unity project. If I go back to gitlab.com here, and I hit refresh, I can verify that this has worked properly because I have my Unity project listed right here under repository under files. 
I have my unit project listed right here. I can open this up. I can see assets, packages, so on and so forth. I can also see my dot get ignore where it should be and notice that it did not push up that library directory, right? So this is everything that my group needs to work collaboratively on this one Unity project. When I'm done with this, there's nothing else I really need to do. My project has been pushed to my repo and it has been shared with most of my group. Now it's time for them to go and watch the next video on how to get their files into the project.